But we are wrapping up our strap series this morning. And uh, if I have said anything that you have found helpful in any way, uh, it's because it was either inspired by um, or straight up stolen from this guy right here, Ron Blue. Ron, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, Sean, I say everything I have is copyrighted, so copy it right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I've done my best, man. I've done my best. So you have been in the financial world for, you were just saying, 56 years. Right. Tell us a little bit about your journey and maybe some of the things that you have learned uh, along the way. I graduated from IU in 1967 with an MBA, went to work on Wall Street as a CPA and eventually started a, an accounting firm and then I started a financial planning firm and then I started a training firm and as I look back I can see God's hand in many, many ways. But if I could sum it all up, I would say Wall Street provides knowledge but God's Word provides wisdom. Mm. And what I've been privileged to do is to bring the two together in biblical financial wisdom. And what I've found is that God's Word speaks to every circumstance at any time under any set of circumstances for everyone. Yeah. It's all inclusive. Yeah. And not only that, but it's pretty simple. You know, the messages that you've given have not been complex. They They've haven't. Been it's not rocket science. It's not yeah. rocket science. They're simple, it's relevant, and easily repeatable. Mm -hmm. So, like all of Scripture. Yeah, that's right. And really, it comes down to, to four H's. Uh, there's the financial um, heart, health, habits, and then and hope. And we've looked at three of those so far. But when you think about those four H's, uh, which one to you is the most important? The heart, <laughs> no question. The first decision that somebody has to make is who owns it. Mm -hmm. And that changes everything. It's the beginning of discipleship. It's the beginning of obedience. And until you answer that question, you're not a steward. Mm. You're an owner. And yeah. the owner has all the rights, and the steward only has responsibilities. Oh, that's good. Can you say that again? Because that, that's a, that might be the best thing that's said all this series. <laughs> well, as the owner, and God is the owner, yeah. he has all the rights. Yeah. And I am, as a steward, the one responsible for managing his resources that he entrusts to me. So I have responsibility, but I don't have rights. Mm, that's good. So you once had the opportunity uh, to share the five habits that we looked at last week uh, in front of Congress. And so things like spend less than you earn, avoid the use of debt, create financial margin. How did that go? I mean, clearly they listened to your words of advice and wisdom. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. But, but what was it like speaking in front of Congress about biblical principles to financial wisdom? And uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Well, actually it was a subcommittee that Dan Coates was a part of oh. and he knew who I was and invited me to testify before this. Senator Dodd from Connecticut was the chairman of the subcommittee. Okay. So Senator Dodd said to me, he said, what would you tell the American family? And right off the top of my head, without even thinking, I thought, he's going to laugh at this. <laughs> <laughs> I said, spend less than you earn, avoid the use of debt, build margins, set long-term goals so you trade off the short-term and the long-term. And he picked up his pencil, he wrote them down, and he repeated them back to me. And he said to me, he said, you know, it seems to me that that'd work at any income level. And God gave me something to say. And I said, you're right, Senator, including the United States government. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. And that's what I love. And you talked about it already. Like in Scripture, it is practical. And it is wisdom for whatever stage you find yourself in, yeah. in your finances. When you're dealing with principles, yeah. you're dealing with things that don't change. So those four principles, plus give generously, which I added later, but when he said what he did, I realized that God's word spoke at any income level, mm -hmm. any level of wealth, poverty to billionaire, mm -hmm. the principles don't change. Yeah. So what words of hope would you give to someone who maybe finds themselves living paycheck to, to paycheck? Hope is an uh, interesting word. As a matter of fact, in my quiet time yesterday, it was on hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the suggested reference was uh, Romans 5, verses 1 through 5, huh. where it says, Hope does not disappoint, yeah. for God has poured out His love to us through the Holy Spirit. And so hope can only come in a person. Mm -hmm. That's what the devotional said to me, is Jesus is the answer 
to hope. Yeah. And so he said, he pours out hope into my heart. Yeah. So if I start with him, I can have hope. And I imagine the same advice would be given to those who find themselves maybe in, with some financial stability. Don't put your hope in your finances. For sure. In fact, I believe that people are looking for either security or success or significance that money might provide. Mm -hmm. And I know this, you can't accumulate enough to be secure, successful, or significant. Mm. I've worked with people at all levels, and money will never ever be the answer to those three goals uh, in life. Not at all. So any final words of wisdom when it comes to our finances and mastering your money, which I think would make a really good book title. <laughs> uh, you, should, you should maybe think about that, Ron. <laughs> I'll think about okay. that. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, you know, I was walking out of church one time, a long time ago, and somebody said, you're a financial expert, aren't you? And I said, well, I suppose. And they said, what advice would you give? And right off the top of my head, I said, spend less than you earn and keep doing it for a long time and you'll be just fine. <laughs> you'll be just fine. <laughs> That's good. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for uh, helping me just plan this series and really appreciate you and Judy and your ministry over the last 56 years and know that it's gonna, gonna continue uh, well, well, well beyond. I appreciate, Sean, the way that you've presented it. And as I've walked away from all the messages you've given, I said, you didn't give my message, mm. you gave your message. It came from your heart and that was so encouraging mm. that you weren't repeating stuff that I had said. Mm. Yeah. You were, it was, you owned it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.